Howdy ho, Maplers, and welcome to our second fastest 250 mechanic. Also, more than likely, the last 250 of 2020. We started the year on Dual Blade, one of my worst experiences ever <laughs> in this game, and uh, I'm glad to say we're ending it with quite possibly one of my best experiences in terms of 250s. I went into mech almost on a whim. I saw that the mobility buffs had gone through with the awake patch, and I figured, ah heck, why not, right? Let's throw our hat in the ring for mechanic, and oh boy, I'm glad I did. Mech is, mech is a good old powerful washing machine of fun. It's super, super mobile. It's a very insane mobber. It takes a fair bit of funding to get to that point, but you get out what you put in for this class, absolutely. For the gear, this was my first 250 since swapping two mace to obtain accessories. I rerolled all the potentials on my old drop gear into one line of mace to obtain. Unfortunately, none of them rolled any decent stat lines otherwise, except for my earrings. So at this point, I'm rocking 100% mace to obtain and only 20% drop from my reinforced pendant. It's not a lot of drop rate, but at this point in my 250s, I should be okay for node stones going forward, at least for a little while, I hope. And the extra meso I get while training from meso obtained gear is already proving to be very, very useful. Everything for mech, this is my first pirate 250, so I'm just reusing my xenon gear and I'm using my newfangled dex pirate set that I've been waiting to show off. Most importantly, this insanely overpowered cape that Jonah cubed for me during DMT. Oh my lord. It's unreal how good that main pot is. And then a placeholder heart, just for the Star Force. For mechanic, you ideally want to have attack speed inner if you're bossing, because your tank mode auto attacks are a lot of your damage, and you're going to want them out as fast as possible. But for training, I would highly recommend either Mesa Obtain or Drop Rate as your prime line, since getting to 250, getting to 275, that's a lot of grind time. You're going to want those extra mesos, those extra drops, and while you're training, you really don't need that attack speed line. So if you have the honor, or if you have the circulators and reboot, I'd say reroll that. For the V Matrix, as always, right in its, in its rightful spot, decent holy symbol, maxed out in its first slot. EXP, drop rate, who could ask for more? It's a perfect skill, you always want it. Secondly, decent sharp eyes. Gives you crit rate, gives you crit damage. Very nice to have. I pretty much use this on all of my 250s since the less crit rate I have to use on my Lynx and Legion, the better. And for the boost nodes, mech's boost nodes are very, very important. Your summons make up almost 90% of your mobbing. You do literally like 10% of the work. It's almost all your summons. So you want to get these boosted ASAP. For your first boost node, Rock and Shock, Bots and Tots, and Distortion Bomb. Rock and Shock is by far your strongest mobbing skill. It is also one of the weakest summons that you have. Bots and Tots is quite strong, but it's not the greatest mobber, unless it's one-shotting. So you want those boosted for sure. Then your second boost is going to be Robo Launcher, Homing Beacon, and Heavy and AP Salvo Plus. Robo Launcher is a zero cooldown summon, very very handy, it's very good at mobbing. Shoots two mobs, does really good damage. It's probably going to be your first summon that's actually going to start one-shotting. So it's very nice to have boosted so that it's a guaranteed one-shot most of the time. Homing beacons are going to be like your main use skill. You're just going to be tapping this key a lot getting to 250. They're very, very good now that they are client-sided. You absolutely feel the difference now that they're client sided. It was probably the biggest change mech got besides the mobility in my opinion. You can now get two casts of homing beacon off per auto attack with your tank mode, it feels like. It is so much better than it was before. It's tons and tons of damage for your bossing and it is very, very nice for your mobbing. And then since we're a pirate, we've always got to have loaded dice. Who doesn't like cheating at dice rolls, right? You get a lock in that 6 roll, you guarantee yourself an additional EXP buff. It's probably one of the most overpowered skills pirates have. It just makes all pirates level faster than pretty much anyone else can even hope to achieve. And on a class like mech, that just means the rates are even higher <laughs> than everyone else can get close to. 
as always, you want the resistance infantry. It's probably the most overpowered common resistance skill there is in the fifth job. It's very, very good as a bossing skill, a mobbing skill, and it does tons and tons of damage. Very, very nice. Oh boy. And then for mech skills. Mecha carrier. Oh boy. <laughs> This skill is absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. It is probably my favorite fifth job skill in the game now. It looks amazing. It's very, very strong for both mobbing and bossing. It lasts a long time. It does very, very good damage. And oh boy, when you get out of range of this thing and it warps towards you, whoo! But a Warhammer 40k vibes. It looks so goddamn gorgeous. I love this skill. As well, your second handy dandy summon for the fifth job, Doomsday Device. This and Mecha Carrier sh share the same cooldown, so generally you're going to be using them at the same time. They go hand in hand, improve your mobbing and your bossing exponentially while out. Doomsday Device also can kind of be renamed to the Self KS Device. This thing will more than likely out mob you when it's out. <laughs> Like, you'll be tr sitting there trying to hit things with your missiles, Doomsday Device will kill everything around you before your missiles even get close to mobs. It's very, very nice as a mobbing skill. It's very strong as a bossing skill. I'd say get it as soon as you have your boost nodes on. And then Full Metal Barrage. Oh my lord. If you guys were around for the stream, you know everyone's favorite time of the stream. The coin capping dummies. Oh my god. <laughs> And I thought Nightlord Burst was beautiful. Oh, you haven't lived until you've seen Mech Full Burst for coin capping. It is one of the most glorious sounds in this game. It just, it sounds like damage, and it is a ton of damage. It's amazing. You're pretty much invincible for the entire cast it does a ton of damage you span you spawn a ton more rockets while you're in this thing so you want to be spamming rockets while you're holding the key down holy moly it's an amazing burst skill i love it then of course true arachnid reflection you get this for completing the will storyline it's a handy skill to throw in as extra mobbing extra bossing damage it's good to have and then, in my opinion, probably the least necessary mech fifth job skill. I threw it on last out of everything because, for mech, boost nodes are most important, followed by your summons, and then your burst skill. This thing kind of fits a little bit in between. It can be both a burst skill and a mobbing skill. It's fairly good, it's got a lot of damage, but... Eh... It doesn't feel that amazing to use for me. Between Heavy Salvo and your rockets, you don't really need it as a mobbing skill because your summons are already doing 90% of the work. You don't really need the 25 second cooldown mobbing skill. So, really the only time I threw this on was for Dojo. And in Dojo, oh boy, this does a lot of damage. <laughs> it's 33 missiles that hit, what was it, 5 times each? 33 missiles, 5 times each. Every cast of this is 165 lines of damage. It's really good burst on such a low cooldown. But just outside of dojo runs, it's not all that useful early on. <laughs> Since most of your other skills already do enough to like one shot through elites. You don't really need it until later. And then probably the most important skill for mech. You need, and I emphasize need, relentless attack special node for mechanic. All of mechanic summons have different cooldowns. None of them are really synced up besides like doomsday device and mecha carrier. You need this thing to be reducing their cooldowns so that while you're mobbing, there's no gaps in your summons. If you're mobbing effectively with like Frenzy or Kish and Spawn, this should be proccing enough that you have a near 100% uptime on summons. And when you have that near 100% uptime as summons, Mech is probably one of the best mobbers in the game. Without this boost node, Mech can be really, really rough to train because those gaps in your summons add up a lot over the course of an hour and they hurt your exp rates exponentially the more gaps there are and it doesn't feel great to train around them one of the main problems with mech <laughs> and we'll see this while testing videos oh your most important summon also has your longest cooldown so uh these training methods are going to be kind of gapped out just to accurately demonstrate them right also 
you always gotta make sure you lock in that six. It's not terribly important right now since we're just showing off the training methods, but whenever you log in on a pirate, make sure you lock in your dice. For 200 to 205, honestly, everything in Vanishing Journey, big sucks. Not gonna lie to you. Also, most people probably aren't terribly funded on their mechs early on, so I would really say stick to Fez 2. Really, it's it's probably your best bet to get to 205 with the least amount of suffering. Let's see how, how much suffering it takes to find a map, right? It's Fez 2 after all. On a Terra burning event, this might have been a bad decision. <laughs> oh well. If worse comes to worse, I can just mimic the summons and show you guys where I would put things without KSing someone. Oh boy. Fez 2 still as popular as ever, man. Alright, we'll give it one more channel, then I'll just mimic where I put my summons, because... Alright, perfect. One more channel is all we need. For your summons, Rock and Shock, you want to stretch as far as you can on the bottom here. Because this is the longest platform, this is where you need him. And then I would also set your Robo Launcher down here, because he's got a fairly long range to him. And you can just face him towards the corner where Rock and Shock isn't. And then for you, you can just stand here and tap your missile keys while looking left and right, if you're strong enough to one-shot. If you're not, you can go up top, drop down your bots and tots, and then you can stand here in the middle and just hurricane left and right, and trust bots and tots to do a fair job of mobbing up there. And by golly, this is probably the best map mechanic has if you're not terribly funded. It gets good EXP rates, not the best, but it's very, very fast if you have spawn boosters. And as well, 200 to 205, these maps are over very, very quickly. You're not going to be struggling too long in these level ranges before you're finally free and you can skip on Vanishing Journey because I'll be honest with you, when I did this character for Breakthrough, 200 to 210 was really rough in Vanishing Journey. I wasn't very enjoyable. Definitely, definitely a class I would recommend skipping Vanishing Journey. The maps just don't really work for mech. Now for mech in Hidden Research Train. 205 to 210, honestly, to 215 if you want to. This is an amazing map. I love Reverse City. It's very, very flexible. It's very, very good EXP. But the caveat, you need to be fairly strong and you need that 100 arcane force, if not more for the bonus damage. But for the summons, Robo Launcher on that platform. Always have Frenzy spawn down. And now a nice little thing that a lot of people don't know. Your Rock and Shock will hit everything that's within the triangle that it creates. It's not just what the laser is passing through, it's everything within the triangle. So all of those mobs in the middle will get hit by Rock and Shock as long as we're in combat, as you can see there. And then you just set it there. I would honestly just set your bots and tots there on the bottom, and then you can just stand over here and spam missiles. You'll be targeting the ones directly above you, but you'll be spawning so many missiles that they'll die before they get hit, and then the stray missiles will just go up to the top. And if you're strong enough for your missiles to one-shot here, oh boy! <laughs> the EXP is really good! Like, beyond insane! I would highly recommend if you're playing mech to definitely make use of an Aron Link. Aron Link level 3 for me, while getting to 250, made up almost 10% of my total EXP gains. It's absolutely, absolutely insane how fast this class stacks combo if you're able to farm with missiles. If you're not able to farm with missiles, I would probably set another summon here on the bottom and then just hurricane left and right on this one and then use your missiles to clear up the top. With another summon down there, it's less that you have to take care of and quite honestly, <laughs> using the hurricane on mech is not very enjoyable. It's one of the few skills on this class that I really don't like. It's uh in need of some updates, to say the least. I'll rant about that more later. But for me, I skipped over this, and I did 210 until 220 in Choo Choo Island. I completely skipped Slurpee on this character because Hidden Illard Forest just didn't feel all that great for me with the summons, and Slurpee Forest Steps, by golly, is still a really good map. <laughs> and the summons work out very, very well here. For Slurpee, you want to line yourself up with this portal for your first Rock and Shock summon. Then you want to jump down, and then you want to get to your maximum range for your second summon. Then you go to the other side, maximum range on Rock and Shock, 
And there you go, you're effectively clearing all those at once. Then bots and tots on that platform, drop down, and set up a robo launcher. And then you just have to tap your missile key right here. <laughs> By god, you have a hundred percent uptime, full map clear. <laughs> oh man. Mech is quite possibly one of the best mobbers in this game. It's unreal how many maps they're able to just fully cover with summons with 100% uptime as long as you're using that special boost node in order to have 100% uptime on your full map clearing. And the EXP rates here are absolutely insane. Like, I rant and rave about how good Hidden Millard Forest can be, but when you're full clearing Slurpee like this, as fast as Mech can full clear Slurpee, oh man, Slurpee Forest Depths is still a chad for EXP rates. <laughs> I would highly recommend giving this one a try. Or heck, if Slurpee is too popular, you can trade in Hidden, Illard, Hidden Illard Forest. It's not bad by any means, it's just not as good of a full clear setup. And it requires more funding, which, again, mech funding is very important. The difference between a funded and an unfunded mech is probably double the experience rates. It's pretty insane. And then, for 220 until 237, not even joking, till 237, because level difference is a lot of damage reduction for Arcana maps, so when there's a class that is this reliant on one-shotting with your summons, you want to stick where you can one-shot as long as you can before moving on. And for me, Rev Place 3. Oh my god. This is, this is, this is where I fell in love with Mech, because you can get some pretty nasty experience rates. This is the first character since Battle Mage where I've broken a hundred bill EXP per hour in Latchland. For your summons, Rock and Shock along the bottom, Lucid Soul at the base of the house, then jump up, and I would honestly recommend using bots and tots on the house, because bots and tots can get over to that corner, which means nothing's gonna clump up on you, and it works out great. Put your robo launcher here to the left of the portal, and by golly, you can just stand over here and spam turrets, and oh my good god! <laughs> 300 mil mesos per hour, 100 billion EXP per hour, in Lachlan! Mech is just turbo flexing on so many 250s in terms of leveling speed with how good its full map clear rates are. It's insane. Probably one of the fastest there is in the most amount of maps possible. Like, outside of Zero in Upper Path, I don't think I've played a single mobber who even comes close to Mech in terms of like consistent peak rates. Like, Xenon has some high highs, but its averages are a little above, above average where Battle Mage is about above average as well. Mech is like the outlier at the very tippity top. It pretty much has a, there's a map in every location for Mech where you can set up your summons for full map clearage and by God, it's gonna get some juicy EXP rates doing so. Mech is definitely not a slouch when it comes to mobbing. You absolutely shred through maps, especially if your summons are strong enough to one shot or even two shot because for this next training rotation, I wasn't fully one-shotting when I went there, but I am glad I went there, <laughs> because it's probably the best map for my funding range for 237 until 250, because I wasn't strong enough to make my summons one or two shot in Aspera, but I'll show off the rotation as well for that. Deepest Cavern Upper Path. This is a very popular map for Kana's, because it does, it has a lot of spawn, but the map layout doesn't, like, it doesn't work for a lot of classes, but for Mech and for Kana, who have lots of summons, good map control, this map is really, really good. The summon rotation I used is Robo Launcher there. You want your bots and tots down here in the middle platform. Lucid Soul on the left platform, because once you have your summons set up, that's the least amount of mobs for Lucid Soul. And my Lucid Soul was only three shotting when I first got here, so having her on a platform with the least amount of mobs possible was beneficial then rock and shock through that left platform so that Lucid Soul doesn't have to compete with anything, and then you stand down here, want to drop your support unit, want to drop your portal so that you get extra final damage from your passive, you summon up both of your fifth job skills, and then you just tap your missile key. Make sure all your EXP buffs are running, and oh boy, this place can pump out some numbers, boys. 
130 bill exp per hour consistently 300 mil mesos per hour consistently this map is absolutely insane as well it has the added bonus when you're replacing your summons you're effectively full looting the map because you have to dash through these platforms to drop your bots and tots back off drop your lucid soul once you have to go back for a rock and shock, you start it here, walk your way through, place the second one, place the third one, replace Robo Launcher. Nothing is ever expiring on this map, and you can get some very, very good EXP rates, as well as really good Mesa rates if you're rocking some Mesa gear. Highly, highly recommend that map. And for reg servers, it's actually not a popular map at all. Like, the only people who would use it were Kana and Adele's, but most Adele's are lazy players. They, they're like me. They'd rather sit in CLP look left and right and then spam spam swords i understand that but if you want to push your rates as high as they can go that's an amazing map be sure to try it out and then for Asphera, i'll be honest i didn't think this rotation up i found this through like a stray youtube video with almost less than a thousand views if i'm remembering right because honestly i didn't think this was possible actually is this the right one or was it mts3 it's mts3 yeah or is it no, it is MTS4. My bad. I didn't do this all that much, sorry. But, I didn't think this was possible. From the floor, set your first rock and shock. You can get all the way up to this platform for your second rock and shock. I didn't think that was possible. That seems like the absolute max range it's got. Because it can't even go the length of the platform for this last one. It's already too far. But that's how you set up your rock and shock. And that fully covers that side of the map. And then what I did was set Lucid Soul here in the middle, because she's not going to one-shot any of the mobs, but she's going to draw aggro and pull them over to me. Then I would drop Support Unit and your first portal right there at the bottom. And then above you, I wouldn't place anything. I would place Robo Launcher here, and then go up to the top, place your second portal, and then drop your bots and tots. Because once your summons are up, well, once your portals are fully up, you can use your portals to get back to the top. And then from here, you can just stand here at the bottom and spam your missiles, or if you're not strong enough, you can use your salvo and then spam missiles. Because you can salvo and missile at the same time, your missiles will focus on the mobs above you, clear those out, your Lucid Soul's gonna be tagging mobs off to the left and she'll draw them into your aggro range, so they'll focus on you once they've been hit. And pretty much, this is the best rotation I've seen for an Asphera map. It's very, very simple. As well, it also works really well for replacing your summons because you just tab over, drop Lucid, and you'll loot all of these mobs. When you need to go back up to the top, you just go through the portal, drop down another bots and tots, you'll loot that platform, you can fall off, place another Robo Launcher, or you could even place Robo Launcher when you're resummoning your Rock and Shocks because Robo Launcher lasts a long time and it has no cooldown, so you can really replace it whenever. It's just however you can fit it into your rotation to loot the most efficiently. And I would honestly recommend that map for anyone who's stronger than I am. But, uh, I definitely am not strong enough usually. <laughs> Especially for a class that's that's this funding reliant for its optimal rates. Mechanic is... It's almost like Evan, where it needs a lot of investment in order to mob at its peak potential. It also needs its boost nodes, just like Evan. Then, for the passive hypers, I'll go over these because I think these are important for mech. You want to have all three points into Rock and Shocks. I'll emphasize again, this is your most important mobbing skill. It will do a lion's share of your mobbing. It's one of like seven summons you have maximum and it does almost 30 to 40% of your mobbing overall. So you want to make sure you have the duration up and the cooldown cut because this thing is your longest cooldown as well. Even with the special node, if you don't have the cooldown cutter, you're going to have downtime on this. And any downtime on Rock and Shock is bad. You want to maximize Rock and Shock's efficiency. As for your support unit, you always want the one that gives final damage percent because, ideally, you're usually going to be standing in one place just spamming missiles while you're training. So, you want to be standing under this thing, it gives you 12% more final damage, means you're even stronger, all your summons are doing more damage, your rockets are doing more damage, it's a win-win. And also, you want to keep summoning your portal and your support unit, even if you don't necessarily need them, because you get bonus final damage from your robot mastery, which will push you towards one-shotting even more so. For the salvo upgrades, if you're just solely looking to mob, I would recommend using the spread, because if you're not strong enough to fully one-shot with just your missiles, you definitely are going to be using your heavy salvo a lot, and having extra mobs hit is always beneficial when mobbing. However, if you're bossing, 
you need heavy sal or AP salvo plus for that extra line of damage when you're in tank mode. Now for mobbing, a lot of people do like training in tank mode because while you're in tank mode, you get more missile spawns every time you tap your homing missile key. You get more missiles, so more missiles, more mobbing, obviously. But for me, all of the rotations I found, I didn't need the extra missiles at all. Like, period. Maybe that Espero rotation would probably be the best one to use the tank. Because I wasn't fully strong enough to one-shot with everything, maybe the extra missiles would have pushed my rates a little bit higher. But for me, I've much more valued the mobility that mech has in humanoid form because, oh my lord, they done buffed mech's mobility so gosh darn much. This is such a smooth class to play. You zip, zop, and boop through maps like the super-powered Kenmore you were meant to be. It's it's so far from clunky. Now, it just it feels amazing to play. The only skills that I still have gripes for are your rocket jump, because it's like old Hayato up jump if you've ever played that, where it locks you in the animation for the full animation. I wish it would just, once you've lifted off the ground, you could just cancel it with a flash jump, a dash, anything, and it would feel so much better to use. Also, if you don't have a platform above you, it gives you this little pathetic short hop. I wish it kind of worked like the new warrior up charge where it would give you an, a pseudo up jump effect if there was no platform above you, while it maintained the effect to just jump to a platform above you if there was one to jump to. And then the only other skill I have problems with is AP Salvo. This skill is, how do I put this lightly? Really fucking terrible. <laughs> All right, so this is a hurricane skill, although you'd be you'd be remiss to think not. It has one of the slowest hit checks for any hurricane skill in the game. You can have a mob on either side of you, look left and right, and never hit either mob because it scans for targets so slowly. It does good damage for sure, but it hit, it checks for hits so infrequently. It feels really really bad to use as well. The startup and end animations lock you in place. You cannot move fluidly and tap this key. It's super, super awkward to use, which is why I was glad that I was strong enough to mostly rely on my homing missiles, even if it just meant tapping my missile key for 17 hours. But this just doesn't feel great to use, and I feel like it'd be a fairly simple fix, so hopefully in the future Nexon looks at this, but as it sits right now, this skill really, really sucks to use in my eyes. It's, it's so delayed, and it's... It's so slow. It just doesn't feel good to use at all. As well, mechs, mechs little, their portals, they're very fr infrequently used. In bossing, that makes sense, because anyone in your party can accidentally use this thing and potentially commit suicide by teleporting accidentally into a one-shot. But for mobbing, this opens up a lot of versatility for mech. In the Espero rotation, I used these to go from the bottom to the top of the map very quickly because for the entire time I was playing mech, I didn't use rope lift. I just relied on my rocket jump, because for the most part, you don't really need rope lift. Rope lift would have been nice, but you've got your little you've got your little portals to get to the top of tall maps if you need them. As well, you've got your rocket jump to cover any other small gaps. You don't necessarily need rope lift. I'd still recommend getting, or at least saving the one you get from Latchelin so you could use it for Spirit Savior, because uh, yeah, it's very, very handy in Spirit Savior. I wouldn't recommend doing it without it. But for the most part, you don't really need rope lift. Now for the bossing side of mech. Oh, I'm very opinionated on mech's bossing. When a boss stands still, like if it's in a mobile boss, like Phase 1 Lucid, Chaos Zakum, Sea Queen, if you're standing right on top of her so she doesn't move all that much, etc. Or if the boss is bound, mech can just absolutely dump truck some damage lines. <laughs> Like, mech's full burst is probably one of the best in the game. You have so many damage lines that you can just pump out so fast between all of your summons hitting the boss, between all your fifth job summons, your full metal barrage, your mobile missile battery, your resistance infantry, your will skill. You just have lines upon lines upon lines upon lines of damage. The problem being, <laughs> if the boss can move, you can't really set up your summons. Doomsday Device and Mecha Carrier are pretty much exempt from this because they move around and they have a very wide targeting area. So even if the boss can move, they're still going to be doing their jobs. But uh, your Rock and Shock, your Bots and Tots, your Robo Launchers, they're, they're very reliant on bosses not moving very much. And for things like Dojo, 
for like phase two lucid for things that move around a lot hard will i've noticed a lot from some of the videos i've been watching you can't really rely on your summons and thankfully your summons don't make up a ton of your damage for bossing but it is a lot of damage if you can get them off when mech is able to get all of its summons out mech's damage for bossing is honestly really really good <laughs> It has some nasty burst, and now that micro missiles are client sighted, it has very, very good consistent damage as well. Again, I was saying earlier, you can get off two casts of micro missiles per attack while in tank mode if you have the attack speed inner ability. It feels really good. Your consistent damage is better than it's ever been before. The only problem is <laughs> when you're bossing, you're gonna want to be in tank mode all the time. And oh boy, tank is one of the most immobile pieces of shit ever. <laughs> Like, you go from human, who can literally zip-zop and zoom through maps like nobody's business, and then you go to tank. By god. At least you have a flash jump now, so you have something to get away. <laughs> but, oh my goodness. Tank is so immobile. I guess that's like the trade-off that mech has. You do a lot more damage for bossing while you're in tank mode, but at the trade-off of your immobile is absolute hell. Uh, I, don't, I don't really like playing mech in tank mode. Thankfully, you don't have to do it very often while mobbing, but for bossing, it's very important to be in tank mode. And, uh, it's not the most, in it's not the most enjoyable mode to be in for me. I like being mobile, and, uh, tank mode is definitely not very mobile. Also, small nitpick, when you're actually dropping summons on tank, it's very hard to see the animation while you're mobbing. I don't know how people train with mech in tank mode, because, especially for Rock and Shock, I wish there was like a little number indicator down here to show you how many rock and shocks you had. Like when you have one out, it shows up on your buff bar so you can tell like, okay, one of them's been dropped, but once you have the second one out, if there's a bunch of mobs on the map, you can easily lose this thing behind anything. Like you can't even see it through your own character model, let alone the hundreds of mobs that are gonna be stacked up or all of the drops that are left on the floor. So you can quite honestly misplace Rock and Shock a lot. Thankfully, you can right-click the skill before you set your third one down and it won't go on cooldown, but it's still a minor nitpick that I have for the skill. As well, a lot of the times I don't know how this happened, maybe it was just like gaps in my summoning times, but with the special node to reduce cooldown, I noticed a lot of times my Lucid Soul would get desynced from my bots and tots even though they shared the same cooldown. I set them both at the same time because they share the same cooldown, so generally they should be up at the same time, but there were often, like, enough times that I noticed it very frequently where Lucid Soul would be 10 seconds left on its cooldown when Bots and Tots comes up. I don't know if that's, like, my special node proccing a lot right when I place Bots and Tots, but before I place my Lucid Soul, so it gets the 20% reduced cooldown, but not my Lucid Soul, but it happens so frequently that it's something I noticed and had to bring up. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's just me being incredibly unlucky with my summons, but that's something I noticed a lot for mech. The, what else I gotta say about mech, boys? Mobile bossing isn't the greatest. Like, dojo runs I didn't enjoy. Not, not all that much. Like, dojo is effectively just 15 minutes of mashing your micro-missile key with occasional instances of setting up summons. In Dojo especially, bosses are way too mobile to rely on your summons, so besides like Robo Launcher and Bots and Tots, the setting up Rock and Shock is almost a lost cause for most stages. I'd honestly just save Rock and Shock's cooldown for like the 30 to 40 range, where you could actually use it, because it's got a very long cooldown, it doesn't do tons and tons of damage, and uh, it's just annoying to set up around all those mobile bosses. Having something with like a no cooldown summon that does fairly good damage to add on is definitely nice like you'd want to set up rock and shock so you have your maximum stacks for your passive but it's again it's got a very low cooldown and once you go up stages you lose the summon you don't keep the passive stack at all it's just gone so for doing dojo doesn't feel ideal but it's not terrible your full burst effectively covers the whole map the unfortunate thing your micro missiles don't have as wide of a of a range as your full burst so a boss will just teleport to the other end of the map and you'll be losing out on almost half of your DPS while bursting. That feels really, really bad. So ideally you want to bind and then burst, but mech doesn't have a class bind of its own. You're relying so solely on the Urda bind, which isn't the worst. Lots of classes have to do that, but for mech and dojo, definitely doesn't feel great. But for the mobbing side, oh my god, I'm gonna miss mech. I'm gonna miss my mecha carrier. Like... It's amazing that this class was so incredibly fast at mobbing. 
It was one of the most enjoyable classes I've gotten to 200 or to 250, but I'm really sad that it's over so quickly. <laughs> I can I can definitely see myself coming back to Mech as like a meso farmer for beyond level 250 in the future, or even like as a side main. I don't know if I'd fully main it. I'm not sold on the bossing. Like as I was saying, mobile bosses are the bane of my existence on this character. Like stationary bosses, A plus. Mech is great. Tons and tons of fun. Mobile bosses, not so great. M mobbing, triple S plus tier. Mech is so far and above the best mobber that I've played so far. The 22 250s in, and Mech has just outclassed practically everyone. It's, it's honestly impressive. I'm so glad <laughs> that the mobility changes happened. They caught my attention. They got me to play this class. It's severely underrated for what it is capable of. I, I enjoyed mech thoroughly. And I'm pretty sure you guys would as well. If you just put a little bit of tender love and care and quite a bit of funding into it. <laughs> Lots of node stones, a fair bit of mesas. If you get it to the point where you can one or two shot, mech is, mech is very, very good. And I would recommend it to practically anyone. It's one of the most unique playstyles in the game. It's the only class in the game where you do 10% of the work and your summons do the other 90%. So it, it feels weird. It might not be for everyone, but oh god, it was for me. I enjoyed max mobbing as much as I possibly could have. Oh, I'm gonna miss mech. Coming up next for 250s. I've put her off too long. We're getting back to that Iran. She's been waiting, gathering dust, being sad, since we skipped over her and did Evan. And then we skipped over her a second time to do Mechanic. <laughs> so, we're gonna get back. We're gonna do our nice polearm swinging lady. Smack some mobs around. Hopefully have as much fun with her as I had with Mech. I've seen some pretty nasty rotations for mobbing in Temple of Light. It's honestly quite scary. <laughs> It look it, the the rotations look intense as all hell, but it looks like something I'd like to try out at least. So I'm looking forward to see how Iran goes. Hope you guys will wait for that one. Hope you guys will check out my stream. I stream fairly consistently now. I have my schedule up on Twitch and all that noise. I also post out notifications practically everywhere whenever I go live. Talking with you guys has made this grind a lot more fun. <laughs> it's a great experience being able to meme with you guys while training. It's a it's a bit more fun than just watching YouTube videos all the time, right? But, as with all of these videos... <laughs> oh boy, this one's long, ain't it? <laughs> if you have any questions about Mechanic, about my grind for all classes to 250, about Legion, or about training in general, feel free to ask down below. I make it a point with all of these videos, no matter when you find them, six months, a year, two years down the line, I make a point to respond to any and all questions you guys have. I love talking about this game. I talk about it for like 10 hours a day on stream. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. And uh, I hope I see you in the next one. See you later, Maplers.